Hey everybody, John here, and welcome back to the series, How to Use Citrus. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the modulation matrix. And if you're coming from the last video, I did say we're gonna be going into the articulator section next, but after recording that, I felt that maybe the modulation matrix might be a better segue into the next part, so we can kind of demystify and get this out of the way a little bit earlier on. So let's take an in-depth look at this. So we have Let's start with one operator here, and from the last video that we left off, we still have the sine wave up. So, essentially, these rows will correspond to these operators up here. Now, the reason we hear this operator right now is because it's traveling through here, and then it's hitting this active knob, which is going out, and this is the volume for that. And then we can drag that down, and then if we go to the center and let go, it turns off. So now we can play the notes down here, but we're not going to hear anything because nothing's getting sending, nothing's getting sent out of this synth. So to turn this back on, let's turn this back on here, and we hear our uh, operator again. So let's say, for example, we want to do like what synths do. We want to send a a uh, oscillator to a filter and edit it or play with it. So let's go over here and let's click saw because it has a lot of stuff going on. And let's turn this down because it might be loud. So we have this basic saw and we want to filter it. So instead of sending this straight out so we can hear it, let's turn this off and let's go to this filter and vertically it's going to go down and it's going to hit this filter. So let's send it all the way to the filter and let's play something. Now we still don't hear anything because now this filter has a signal inside it, but it's not going anywhere. So follow it horizontally again and then go to that filter's output and then turn that on. Now we hear something. So as you can see, once, let's turn this off here. And once we turn this on, you can see that little light turned on to activate it. It says, hey, this filter's on and it's going somewhere as well as this operator's on and going somewhere. So if you ever see these lights, that means something is happening somewhere. So this oscillator one has a saw and it's going down, it's hitting filter one, it's going all the way over here to the end and it's going straight out. So now we can hear it. So we jump into this tab and this filter tab here, which uh, we're gonna be going over in the next section, the next video of the filters and how all those work. But essentially in this tab, we have signal going through. We can adjust our cutoff, our resonance. So that's how this works here. So that's just a basic filter to the output. Now let's say we want to add effects to it. So we're here in our effects tab, and so far, this first oscillator operator is going to this filter and going out. But we want to also send the effects to it, or send, yeah, send this to the effects. So we get this knob here, and we turn that up, and we hear that chorus already. So, essentially, operator one, go into filter one, go into the effects, and go on out. Now, we can also pan this with this pan knob. And those are basically the only knobs that you need to know what they do. Now, it's kind of the point of thinking where you want to send things to. So as we know, the let's change this back to let's change this to a triangle, for example. Bring that cutoff up a little bit. So we have this sound, and we all know that citrus is an FM synth. So this is this section for FM and RM. Now let's take this operator two, and we want to FM it to operator one. And what essentially that is doing is taking this oscillator here and using that frequency to change or move the frequency of this operator. So before when we had this, this whole modulation matrix up, it was getting sent to out. So if we want to take this signal, this operator two, and use this to influence our sound that's going out through here, we would go to this two here and then start changing this. And the reason that works is because this two, this this one right here is basically saying this is my 
row going this way. And what's happening to this operator is that two is influencing this one. Now you can also have them influence themselves. Or let's go back to two and have it influence it. And then we can change the pitch of operator two and it'll sound different. Because now a lower pitched waveform is influencing, is affecting, is frequency modulating the first operator. So that's how that works right there. And this is also unidirectional, so you can go left or you can go right. So with these knobs, a couple of quick tricks. If you want to temporarily mute it, you right click it and it'll just turn it off. So that's kind of simple. Hold Alt and it'll turn it back to its default and turn it off as well. So it's essentially doing the same thing, but you lose the value. So if we had this all the way up here and we right clicked and muted it, when we unmute, we're still at the same value that this was at before. So hopefully this is kind of uh, clearing up how this works. So let's do a couple other examples just in case this one was confusing for whatever reason. So let's say I want operator three to go to filter two, uh, then go to effects and then go into the out. So let's see operator three, I'll pick a triangle again. And then I'm gonna go to operator, you know what, I changed my mind. Let's go to operator th or out to filter three. So we look where this highlighting is. That's kind of gonna help you a little bit too. When we select these different operators at the top, these numbers change correspondingly. So operator three, we wanna send this to the filter. So we have three and we're going down to our filter section. Let's send it out filter three. And then filter three needs to go to the output so we can hear it. And we notice that this light turns on. And now, the same thing is happening. So let's say, for example, we also want to send uh, this effects, but we don't want this to be filtered. So we can also like, we can also do that. So now what essentially I've done here, if we turn this off, we're just hearing the effects of this third operator here. So it's essentially going just to the effects into here into this tab and then that's all we hear. We don't hear any actual direct signal. So that's a way to leave this, leave these effects unaffected while we simultaneously route the direct signal out. And this is how we'd mix them with, is with these knobs here. So before we end this video, let's try to do a, another example. So let's say we want operator, operator 2 to go to filter 2 and send that out. No effects, but we want operator 3 to modulate operator 2. So before I forget all that, let's start from the top. Operator 2 is going to filter 2. Operator 2 is highlighted here. Bam, sending a filter 2. Now filter 2 we want to hear it, so let's send it to the output. And this is a lower pitch because what we did before, so let's raise this up an octave too. Let's go up another octave, so that would have been four if you remembered. So we have this happening here. Now we want operator three to modulate number two. So we go to operator two's row and say, I, who do I want to affect me now? Not one, not two, I want three. And that's essentially it. It's it's really not that confusing. You just have to think in the in the terms of signal flow. Where do you want this signal to go? You have operator one. Okay, so I want to hear this wave, but what do I want to hear just this, or do I want to send it to a filter first and then hear that effect? So as long as you kind of think of it as in a consecutive process, it's going to help it uh, come a lot more clear and make it not as confusing because. First time looking at this, it could look weird. F1, F2, these, what are these? Five, six, I don't, you know, it, it can be intimidating looking. So that's the FM section of this. The routing is the exact same for RM. The color changes from orange to a little bit of yellow and RM is essentially ring modulation, amplitude modulation is, it's using the waveform and, ampli or, and influencing it through amplitude modulation, if that hopefully makes sense. So experiment with this and try it out. 
One thing that I do want to point out before we end this video is let's say you have the saw wave. Let's send this to I'm operator three. So for example, let's send this to the filter one and then to the output. So we have this. But let's say we want to do that pluck option and like, okay, we like this, but oh, what about that cool frequency modulation thing? And you go over here and wait, all your knobs are gone. So would you have this pluck mode enabled? Frequency modulation for this operator will be disabled entirely. So none of the operators that are available can modulate it. But ring modulation can. So I know on this one, you can't grab uh, these inactive knobs and move them. But as you saw on the ring modulation, you can, even though it kind of looks like you can't. So it's still able to be affected by ring modulation. So let's get four to ring modulate three. So that's just kind of something to think about. Um, maybe if we drag this up a little bit here. So it's something to play with, have fun with this. Hopefully now it makes sense. If there's anything about this that doesn't make sense or if there's something I kind of maybe briefly walked over and you're still confused, please let me know and I'll make a video or reply to the comment and kind of explain the process and in case you still didn't fully understand it. But thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you in the next section where we're gonna go over the filter and all these different settings here and different filter types and what all these buttons and, and knobs here do. So thank you very much and I'll hope to see you in the next video.